Round one. Salve Omnis. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be providing a guide on the Wulin Vanguard hero, Tiandi. At E3 2018, we saw Marching Fire, and with it came a new game mode and four new heroes from an entirely new faction, the Wulin. Tiandi is the Vanguard class hero of the Wulin faction and is noted as a dodge specialist. An incredibly mobile hero with fast attacks, extended dodge properties, and a kick straight from Super Smash Bros., Tiandi looks like a pretty formidable warrior. This guide will assume you know the basics of Verona combat, and you're also familiar with the terminology, such as guard breaks, parrying, chains, and feints, etc., and is aimed at new and existing players to help learn a new character. I want to thank you all so much for the support you have given me on this channel. These guide videos have been received incredibly well and way beyond my expectations. Each and every day I am seeing new subscribers, comments and discussions forming from my videos and I am in complete awe for the kindness that I have been shown. You all keep me motivated to make more videos and I am doing my best, so thank you everyone once again. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Victory. Tiandi has four chains. Lightning Steps is two light attacks, Thunderclap is a light opener and heavy finisher, Typhoon Whirl is two heavies back to back, and Backhand Flurry is a heavy opener into a light finisher. Tiandi's light openers hit for 15 damage and are 500 milliseconds. The light finishers hit for 14 damage but are faster at 400 milliseconds, making them difficult to react to. Heavy openers from the side hit for 30 damage. From top guard they hit harder but slower at 35 damage. Chain heavy finishers however do 37 damage regardless of which direction and all share the same attack speed. When out of lock and sprinting towards your opponent, press heavy attack to perform a sprint attack. This attack has decent range and always hits your opponent's top guard. It does 25 damage but does not function as a chain starter. Press guard break and backwards movement at the same time to perform a palm strike. This can ledge your opponent and allows for two follow up options. Perform a palm strike combo by pressing light attack after a palm strike. So long as the palm strike hits, the follow up light is confirmed. This does 14 damage and the light follow up always comes from top guard. With this in mind, make sure your palm strike hits before using a light attack follow up, because if it's dodged, your opponent has a very easy light parry punish waiting for you. Pressing heavy attack after a palm strike performs the heavy palm strike. This attack behaves identically to another move I will explain later. This attack does 20 damage and has hyper armor. This is represented by a white flash on TND and can be used to trade with opponents. Keep in mind though that even if your palm strike connects, the heavy follow up is not guaranteed, though thankfully it can be feinted. You can combo into palm strike from a light opener or tiger dodge. This gives you more flexibility in when you initiate the move if you don't want to simply strike from neutral. The follow up options all work the same and both palm strike combo and heavy palm strike will end your chain. Dodging either forwards or to either side and pressing light attack performs tiger dodge. This attack does 12 damage regardless of direction. This attack also has the undodgeable property, meaning your opponent cannot evade and must use other methods to counter you. If inputted immediately, side tiger dodge can and will be caught if you try to dodge and attack simultaneously. This however can be achieved by simply delaying your light input after you have dodged. The window is quite generous but it's worth practicing, especially if you're used to other dodge attacks. Tiger dodge also functions as a chain starter. You can go into your 400 millisecond light finishers immediately from a tiger dodge or your more damaging heavy finishers as well as combo into a palm strike. Tiger Dodge also has superior block properties during startup. This means you can Tiger Dodge through blockable attacks if you Tiger Dodge in the same direction as the oncoming attack. Tiger Dodge becomes unblockable here and does an increased 22 damage. If you are successful with a superior Tiger Dodge, you can guarantee a Palm Strike combo afterwards for a total of 36 damage. Use a heavy follow up on a whiffed Palm Strike to bait out parry attempts and punish it with your superior tiger combo. Dodge forward and press heavy to perform a top dragon dodge. This functions exactly the same as the heavy farm strike follow up. High parama, feintable and 20 damage. Dodge sideways and press heavy to perform a side dragon dodge. This attack hits the opposite side of your dodge for 25 damage and has extended dodge properties, making it possible to dodge multiple attacks during this move. 
During a side dragon dodge, you can cancel the attack by dodging or dodge attacking. With this option, you can keep TND mobile and keep your attack intentions hidden. This does put a drain on your stamina, but your options here are plentiful, so you can make your approach dangerous for your opponents. Just like Tiger Dodge, Dragon Dodge is considered a chain starter. Both Side Dragon Dodge and Top Dragon Dodge can be feinted normally. After a heavy attack or Dragon Dodge either hits or is blocked by your opponent, press Guard Break to perform Tiandi's Dragon Kick. This move sends your opponent flying back and to the ground, dealing stamina damage and can be used to ledge opponents. Normally, this doesn't confirm any damage, but the situation changes when near a wall. When kicked towards a wall and you are close by, you can confirm a top tiger dodge, though this does hit your opponent on wake up, so it's unsafe. If you can pin your opponent in a corner when you kick them, you can confirm a side heavy for 30 damage, though again this is unsafe as it hits your opponent during their wake up animation. If your attack that led into your kick came from the top, then you can net yourself a 35 damage top heavy. Once again this is unsafe as it hits your opponent on wake up. Keep in mind that this only works if you are already in top guard. If your guard was to the side prior to the kick, then the top heavy can be blocked, as Tiandi does not recover from the kick in time to switch guard fast enough. However, what is interesting is that Tiandi does recover in time from the kick, enough to be able to counter guard break. Try to remember this when fighting against an opposing Tiandi. The dragon kick can also be cancelled by dodging during the startup of the kick. This can be used to simply cancel out of the kick, or flow into another dodge attack. An effective tactic for those constantly trying to evade the kick is to cancel into a tiger dodge. Tiandi's zone attack consists of two hits, both of which hit your opponent's left guard. The first hit does 20 damage and the second hit does 25 damage. The zone attack itself has good range and the second part of the zone can be feinted normally or can be cancelled into a dragon kick by pressing guard break after the first part of the zone attack. You can dodge to cancel the recovery on both your light and heavy openers. This is another useful tool complementing Tiandi's very high mobility, either defensively to retreat and reposition, or offensively to go into tiger or dragon dodge mix-ups. Now for the punishers. On a guard break, you can get a side heavy for 30 damage. Top heavy is too slow and can be blocked. Tiandi recovers from throws fairly quickly. So no matter the distance, so long as they wall splat, you'll be able to get yourself a top heavy for 35 damage. On a heavy parry, you have a few options. You can simply light attack for 15 damage. The first part of your zone is also concerned for 20 damage. Or you can palm strike combo for 14 damage. The latter option is useful for dealing extra stamina damage to your opponent. Tiger dodge is also confirmed from a heavy parry, but is not worth it due to the lower damage. A light parry nets you a top heavy for 35 damage. If you can guard break your opponent when you are out of stamina, you can confirm a top light for 15 damage. For some reason, side lights can be blocked. Parrying a light attack when you are out of stamina grants you a light of your own for 15 damage. The direction doesn't matter this time. If you can wall splat the opponent when out of stamina, you can still get a top heavy provided the distance to the wall is far enough. The recovery is pretty generous for Tiandi even when out of stamina. The only time the top heavy can be blocked in this scenario is if you are point blank range to the wall when you throw. When throwing an out of stamina opponent, make sure you throw forwards or to either side and you input a light from the direction your guard is already in and then a heavy attack for a total of 52 damage. If you change the direction of your initial light attack during the punish, then your opponent will recover in time to block the heavy. Throwing backwards will cause your initial light attack to miss. If you do throw backwards though, the punish is top heavy into light from the same side for 49 damage. This punish is unsafe however. Parrying an out of stamina opponent is exactly the same as the throw punish. Light from the same side your guard is already in and a follow up heavy for 52 damage total. On revenge activation, light from the side your guard is already in and a follow up heavy for 69 damage. Rally call increases your allies damage when under half health. 
Whilst useful, it is so only situationally, and not a feat I would recommend, especially given the fact that you need to be in critical condition to get the most out of it. Come at me is an underrated feat that helps obtain your other feats quicker. You earn double renown for kills, but take 20% extra damage. Useful as this works on minions, pikemen, officers, and the guardian. Tireless is the go-to pick here, as with all of Tiandi's dodge cancelling, you will burn through stamina very quickly. Reducing the cost of stamina across the board helps you keep on the offensive longer. Sacrifice looks good on paper, but in practice you lose 49 HP to restore all stamina to you and your allies, as well as give them a minor HP region effect, so long as they are close by. This feat needs a buff. Marked for Death is a single target defense debuff that increases renown if you score the kill. Doom Banner is an AoE defense debuff, but is locked in place. Dealer's choice here. Vital Leech is an excellent feat that gives you health regen in your attacks when you are below half health. A solid choice. Battle Cry can boost Tiandi's average damage output, but isn't worth sacrificing your health regen in my opinion. Protected Revive is an interesting choice, again playing into a support or leadership role, but giving up Vital Leech for this is too high a cost. Indomitable, combined with Vital Leech, makes Tiandi hard to kill. Another solid choice, allowing some anti-gank opportunities and giving Tiandi the opportunity to stall for longer. Morale Booster is a great damage buff for your team and a solid choice if you can part with the extra survivability granted to you by Indomitable. Finally, Last Laugh can turn teamfights round completely if you're killed and not executed in the right spot. While a good choice for Peacekeeper, probably not so much for Tiandi. Honestly, Tiandi's perks are the worst part of the hero. Without the typical Vanguard perks like Endurance and Fresh Focus, Tiandi really struggles for perks matching a playstyle. My only recommendation is to avoid Rapid Refresh, as Tiandi's best feats are all passive. Tiandi is a balanced hero. Fast attacks, but lower damage numbers and good mobility means Tiandi might be one of the few heroes that lives up to the label on the character select screen as a dodge specialist. A simple but diverse moveset with some complex dodge cancel mechanics, Tiandi is the classic easy to learn and difficult to master hero. With hero perks being Tiandi's only real downside, I do recommend trying this hero out if you're looking for a new character to play. If you found this guide helpful, leave it a like and consider supporting the channel by subscribing. Remember to tick the bell icon to receive notifications of new content and please comment down below if I've missed anything out or you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao for now!